Hello and welcome to this tutorial on TweenGMS for GameMaker Studio 2. In this lesson, we will be looking at fire tweens, which are the default method for playing tweens with a single line of code. You can use them to ease values for all sorts of variables, such as an object's position, scale, or angle. Let's go ahead and check them out. For our needs, I have placed a single test object in our test room. This object will contain all of our code. To try things out, we are going to have it so that this object will ease from its current position to the mouse's X position when we press the left mouse button. So let's open up our test object's properties and set things up. From here, under events, we are going to select add event, mouse, global, global left pressed. Here, we are going to call the tween fire script, which I will now set up and explain as I go. So we will, we will write tween fire. And down below, you will see the arguments that will be passed to this script. And I'll go through them one at, at a time. The first argument is target. It takes, an, it takes an instance ID or an object index. In most cases, you can simply type ID as the argument. This will associate the tween with the instance calling the script. But you could also supply a value like object player, or object enemy, or things like that to re reference a different instance or object. But for now, we're just going to use ID to reference our test object. The second argument is the easing script we want to use. This can be any of the 31 E scripts included with between GMS. For more info on easing scripts, you can find my video discussing them in the description below. We will be using the script ease in out quad for this case. Third, we supply one of the five mode arguments. Again, you can, find, you can find an earlier tutorial discussing them linked in the description below. We are simply going to use tween mode once to have our tween play from start to finish one time. But we will instead use its shorthand version to keep things cleaner. Supplying instead just zero is the same as writing out tween mode once. So we'll go with that instead to keep things clean. Fourth we have the delta argument. This determines if our tween will use step timing or seconds timing. If we set it to true, then the tween will use seconds for timing, but setting it to false, it will use step timing. In this case, we will set it to false to use step timing. Fifth, we can set a delay value to delay the start of a tween. We don't want any delay in this case, so we'll just put zero. Next, we set the duration of the tween animation. In this case, we are using step timing. So I will put 30 as our duration, which is one second if your game runs at 30 frames per second. Now we need to deal with properties. This is where we indicate which variable we want to tween. This is set by writing out our variable as a string. So in this case, we will write quotation x quotation. This tells tween GMS that we want to tween the x variable. After this, we need to set a start and destination value. We want our object to start from its current position, so we will simply put x. And we want this object to move to the mouse's x position, so we will put mouse x as our destination. And just like that, our tween is set up and ready to go. Let's go check it out. See how our object now tweens from its starting position to the mouse x position over a duration of 30 steps. I'll note here that all tweens created with tween fire scripts will automatically be destroyed when they finish playing or if their target instance is destroyed. So there's no need to manually destroy fired tweens. Tween JMS will automatically handle their cleanup. So in this case, when our object reaches the de destination X value, the tween is auto destroyed and cleared from memory. With that, let's now extend things so that the object also moves to the cursor's Y position. Now, we could do this by writing another tween for the y variable. We could go down here and write tween fire id and yada 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 and do it for the x for the y variable as well. But tween fire supports multiple properties, so we can simply extend our original tween fire call. Down here, you can see that tween fire supports additional optional arguments. The optional arguments are additional properties and their start and destination values. So in this case, we can extend our tween fire script to to call y and we'll use the starting location of y and a destination of mouse y. And there, our tween will now tween our object's value 
our object's y value as well. Let's go check it out. And there we have our object tweening from its current position to the mouse's xy position over a duration of 30 steps. Now let's go ahead and extend uh, this tween with one more property. But before we do that, let's drop down our property um, arguments here to a second line just to keep things a little bit more cleaner. Notice how this won't actually affect or change our script call, but will allow us to manage it more, more easily. So before, b below the x and the y properties, I'm going to add the new property image angle. And I'm, I'm going to have this object spin at 360 degrees. So I'm going to make a starting value of 0 and a destination direction of 360 so that it spins completely around uh, for this tween. Now let's go ahead and check things out and see what this looks like. And there you go. Now our tween is now using the image angle as well over a duration of 30 steps. Again, all this is with a single script called a tween fire. I will now note that there are two additional variations of tween fire scripts called tween fire to and tween fire from. These work exactly the same as tween fire, except that they lack a start or destination argument. Before showing an example, I'm quickly going to comment out our original script call. And I'm going to call tween fire two and give it the same parameters as our um, script call above. But when we get to the properties, uh, it's much the same. I'm going to supply an x variable string. But here it has a two parameter. So we're only setting a destination value and no starting value. This call is actually going to use our x. Um, the current x value as a starting position itself. So I'm here I'm just going to put mouse x as our destination. And for our y, I'm just going to put mouse y. As our starting destination is now assumed to be these actual values. And so when I play this, it should look similar to the previous script call, between fire script call we made here. And as you can see, it acts much acts the same way as the one before but we did not have to supply the starting values, only the destination values. Now, tween fire from works uh, kind of like the opposite fashion, except that now instead of supplying a destination value, we are supplying a, um, a we are supplying a starting position. And it's going to use our x current x value as a destination and the current y value as a destination. And these supply values as a starting point. I'll show what that looks like in action as it can be a little confusing to understand. There we go. It's now using our supplied values as a starting position, and it's using the actual starting values of the of for x and y as a destination instead. Anyhow, if these two variations confuse you at all, just stick with tween fire and you'll be fine. Now there's one last thing I want to discuss about tween fire scripts, and that is the returned tween ID. All tween fire scripts return a tween ID. This tween ID can be used to further manipulate a tween, such as pausing it, stopping it, or adding an event callback. So for example, we can add tween equals, and this will now hold the value returned from the tween fire script with our unique tween ID, which we can use to modify our tween state with scripts like tween pause, tween stop, or tween add callback, etc. So I'm actually gonna use this to change our tween's duration. So I'm going to use a, a script called tween set, and I'll explain this script in a, in a further tutorial later on. But for this case, we just need to see that we're going to supply it our tween handle. This will take our tween ID so we know which tween we want to affect. So we're going to write tween set tween, and we want to change its duration. So I'm going to write duration, and I'm going to give it a new duration value. Up here, we, we have a duration of 30, but I'm going to change it to 90. So that's going to go from like one second to three seconds. So now that when I play this, this should now override our tween's duration and make it play out much slower. And there we go. As you see, our tween's duration has, is now 90 steps instead of 30, which makes it play out much slower. And we've used the return tween ID to modify it 
with our tween set script. Anyhow, this is just a basic introduction to the tween fire scripts. Um, I hope you have found this informal and useful and hope it helps you in your projects. Um, I look forward to you joining along in further tutorials as we continue to look through all the functionality of tween JMS. Thanks very much for joining. Bye for now.